Hey, Mark. Hey, Lawrence. So, Mark, we're often asked how people can use Salesforce to allow external constituents to upload attachments through forms and through portals. In our case, it's very common, like applicants or students or recommenders or parents. How can those external constituents upload documents and attachments into Salesforce? Can a Salesforce environment support that? Well, I can show you. We have some examples uh, where we use Form Builder as well as native Salesforce. And we can have either sites pages or community pages where we can allow people to upload documents. And those documents can be attached to different types of objects, depending on how you configure it. And let me show you one of the examples that I have here. So this is a form that typically a recommender might receive. So they're asked to fill out a recommendation on behalf of a potential student or applicant. And here you have your typical matrix style answering your questions. But oftentimes we see either the need to upload a supplemental letter or an actual letter instead of filling out the form. So in this instance here, the upload is behind this question, would you like to upload a letter? And if somebody says yes, then we have an upload button that shows here. And if I choose a file, then it allows me to upload a doc or lets the recommender the ability to upload a document. And then if I kind of look back at my recommender here, there, you'll see I now have a file or an attachment. We can set up either one, but you'll see it here on the actual record that you configure the page to tie it to. Cool. So that looks like that's an example of as you said, an unauthenticated sites page where a recommender is receiving a link and they're coming to some kind of page or an external constituent is receiving a link, they're coming to a public facing page or an external accessible page uh, without a login and password, and they're able to upload a document into Salesforce. Is that correct? Correct. And then we're often asked about use cases where somebody might log in to an authenticated environment. Let's say an applicant is applying and they're logging into the applicant portal and they need to upload documents or other kinds of authenticated experiences. Maybe parents or employers are logging into some kind of portal and also uploading documents or attachments. Is that something that we also can support? Yeah. Yeah. So similar kind of situation here, I'm logged in as a student. If they were filling out an application through a portal, you see the logout button up here. These are my different pages on the left that I have to fill out. If I go down to essay, for example, here, the university, you know, requires the student to submit an actual essay as part of their application. Instead of typing it in, they have the uh, ability here to just same thing. There's a button that's tied to uh, an object, most likely the application object, and I can upload a file similar to the recommendation form. And I can now submit a document to meet that requirement that the application is asking for. So here we're looking at an environment where somebody's logged into Experience Cloud as an authenticated community user. They've logged in here and then they're able to upload an attachment. Yep. Right. And so that ability there, that add that button, you showed it here on this form. You showed it also on the other form where it was even optional, where the ability to either render that button was something that we can control. Can you show us how we can add those buttons to these pages, how we can control that logic of who can see the button when it's required and so on? Yeah. So in both situations, we would use our form builder product to build the page itself. And this is the page on the back end for the recommendation form that I uploaded earlier. And along the left-hand side here, you'll see these are all my different objects that I have on the page. So I have an application object, I have a contact object, I have a recommendation object. And then down here, I have different components. And one of the components is an upload button. So what I would do if I was doing this from scratch is I would just drag it onto the page and then configure all this. But because we already have one on the page, I'll just open up. This is my upload configuration button. And from here, I name the button, field, label, whatever I want. I can pick what size I want the upload to be. I can also select which formats I want to accept. And down here, this is, you know, my required logic. So right now it's required just as true. 
But as far as required goes, as well as rendered goes, I have the option to make something either um, true or conditional. And in this instance, if you remember, my first question was, do you want to upload a document? Yes or no. And then that rendered the um, the field. This is what I, I controlled here. So under my render condition, I selected the field that I wanted to use, the value that I want them to select to then render this upload button. So is that how we would control similar use cases where people said, hey, we only want international applicants to be able to upload a document or we want it to be required for people applying to the nursing program? We would be able to use that logic to control that. So yeah, we can use any field of information to control the render or the required condition. So any piece of data about a person, a contact record, or a record in Salesforce we can use in order to control whether that upload button appears, if somebody is an international applicant or an undergraduate applicant or an applicant for the business program, we could choose to require or render an upload button on a form. Correct. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate it. Anytime. Appreciate it.